what is going on guys bcd here back with another quick video not too quick actually today we talking about the playstation 5 and my experience and i got a lot to say a lot of some good some bad but i want to talk to you about it and i want to show you what i'm talking about as well that's why it's a little bit longer but again that's the whole point i want to give you a thorough and honest review of this it's not a review technically because i'm not reviewing the console as in its, its entirety i'm just talking about events and isolated events for me so um if you like this type of content please don't forget to like and subscribe um again i want to preference this i'm not trying to bash the experience of the playstation or anything like that i'm just explaining to you what i'm seeing so that you be aware i want to i want to inform people about the playstation and i want to inform people about the xbox so i'm going to do the same thing for that this is no type of bashing this is just honest conversation and i think if you actually listen you'll know that as well so Thank you guys for watching, and we just hit 2,000 subscribers, so that's big, but I want to cut this short, so see you in a bit. All right, I'm back. So first, let me just state that um, some of these issues, again, it being a new council, I want you guys to make sure you take that into consideration. You understand what we're getting, and you, we're, we're judging it appropriately. Um, so starting off, I'm going to start with all of the great things I really enjoy about the PlayStation. I really enjoy the snappiness and the new feel of everything. Um, and I really enjoy the, you know, that it's always in 4k and HDR. So it doesn't switch necessarily. It's just always there. And as soon as you start a game, it's still there because it's already in that HDR status. Um, I really enjoy the minimalistic viewing of everything and you putting the, the game at the forefront of the screen. Uh, the, the easy switch over to media so you can get straight into your apps and things of that nature. All of that is really great. Um, I don't use my this um, as my media center because I have a Google TV. Uh, so I, I rather do that, but this here is a lot easier for you guys that, you know, do use this as a, your main media center. Uh, some of the thing that I also enjoy is the broadcasting ability. Um, you can see it and explore immediately from the homepage. The PlayStation Shore is, the PlayStation Store is a much needed revamp and it is 10 times better than what it used to be uh, there is itemization of what's ps4 and what's not even if you go into your um, let me let me move it over here if you go into your apps game library and you look in here and you see what's installed it'll tell you if it's ps4 ps5 and it also gives you the indication if it's on storage if it's disk based um, and things of that nature if it has the PlayStation Plus symbol, you know, you got it with PlayStation Plus So it makes it very simple for you to find what you need and to start things up um, And and that's all great, right? Uh, all really good stuff all really good stuff. I Don't like that when you come in here and you're going you have to again this top portion is all the previous games you recently played, and there's no way of changing it or switching it around. I do not like that. That's one thing that I can say I don't enjoy about it, is that literally it, it goes based off what you recently played, and there's no way of keeping things there. There's no ability to like put stuff into folders yet. So when you're, ever, you're trying to find a game that you want to play, you literally have to go over to the right, Go to your games library. This is your collection, but you go to your install by hitting uh, R1, and then you can see what's on your console storage, which starts off at that first, which is great. I really appreciate that they do the console storage first, because that's mostly what you're going to be playing anyway. Then it goes into your extended storage, and it showcases everything that's on there. I love how they break it apart like that, because it makes it easier for me to navigate. Um, that is awesome. I wish the installed portion was 
first and not your collection first. I wish it was installed first. It's just an extra click, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I really just wish it was switched around so I can have my installed showcased first versus your collection because again this is just stuff that's there and I and um and uh, again you can keep this sorted by how you want so if you wanted to do it a, a to z that's um even better for you so even if you were to leave and come back it's still going to be oh wait it defaults back well that sucks i thought it stayed well, real time here. Obviously, it does not stay. I wish it did, though. Uh, if you were to just switch it to A and Z, and it come back, that's fine. But if you leave and then come back into it, it goes back to new and old. Well, you, know, you live and learn. You understand that. But you always have access to sort it. Even if you're on, like, going down the middle, you can always get that access to sort. So that's still good, but... No, that kind of sucks. Uh, then they have you break down a PlayStation Plus so you can see exactly what it is that you can do there. So a lot of good stuff. Um, settings is always at the top, um, and you can always hit that home button menu. Obviously, you can't get it down here, which um, is unfortunate, but you have a lot of access to music, you know, your game-based notifications. The switcher is pretty cool. You can switch to get recent stuff that you recently did, and then you can just go home. And over time, you're going to get used to this. And honestly, I feel like the search being right at the top, being able to see all of the stuff you want to look at, all of this stuff makes it a lot easier to kind of navigate and get through. And you can use the mic on the controller that comes with it to, you know, navigate with voice. So a lot of this stuff is very intuitive, very smart and thought out. Um... But I have to talk about the stuff that I just don't like about this thing right now. Um, and I'm going to leave out my issues with just my television for now because my Series X also has that. As of now, I can't get 4K 120 on my PlayStation 5. And I don't think that's at the fault of Sony. It's at the fault of my, you know, my, comp my brand of um, television. Uh, but on my series X, I can do that as of now, but I'm going to leave that out again. I just want to notify you guys, but I don't want to make sure I don't want to put that as a knock because again, I don't believe it's Sony's fault. I believe it's my company for Vizio, um, OLEDs. I think that, I think that's the reason there, but starting up, uh, save data issues. So this is a, this is a very interesting thing here. Uh, when you first booting into your storage and you are looking at your game applications and you come to, to realization that you only have, again, 667 gigabytes actually free, you're, you're probably wondering, what is this other down here? And it says it's needed for at games and apps to work properly. Well, when you're playing actual games and you're playing backwards compatible games if you put them on the internal storage like the playstation 4 games days gone dragon ball z um those games bloodborne i have on my system right now they are making up a bulk of that it's usually if you have no backwards compatible games on your uh internal storage that will drop to 19 gigabytes. So your backwards compatible games aren't just taking up the space um, identified by the game. It's also taking up additional space because they need that space in order to run those backwards compatible games. Um, it's very strange, but it really takes a hinder to that 667 gigabytes that you get free if you were to even put a few, like like I said, a few additional games, I am well above that 19 gigabytes. And as you can see here, I only have uh, three games that's backwards compatible on the internals because I actually wanted to see how they showcased. Um, versus, well, you know, in my extended storage, I mean, I have plenty. Um this something here that's very strange to me. Uh, 
I don't like it and I don't understand why it's happening because to, to start off, you have such little storage and to take some more away from you because you want to play backwards compatible games, it's, it's just unfair at this point. And a lot of you probably have hard drives out there that you're using for your expandable storage like I am. I'm obviously going to upgrade to an SSD here shortly, but right now I'm using an external hard drive and it is slow, people. So if I wanted to take advantage of those speeds, I want to move that stuff over. I have to combat with the 667 gigs I got for my new games, as well as the additional other space that's being included. It's pretty disappointing. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's, it is pretty disappointing. Um, another thing, I, and because I, and this only sticks out to me, another thing that I want to talk about it only sticks out to me because I'm constantly in my storage and managing it. Um, I want to know like how long it actually takes for this stuff to actually load. I don't understand why it takes for so long for this to load. And this is the SSD. And it takes the same amount of time for my extended storage that has about 61 games on it to load as the storage that it would be for the ssd i don't understand why it just takes so long for me to you know get into there and see exactly what's going on it's a small thing but i'm just like it's the ssd i got eight games come on you can load it faster it doesn't have to take that long when i got a hdd that's doing the same thing it seems as if it's not taking advantage of the speeds uh of the ssd to kind of just showcase that it's just it still takes a while I'm assuming it, it's it's the UI that's loading. But anyways, small, small thing. What I also want to talk about in here as well is how the cloud saves work. So some of my games that I've been playing weren't actually saving properly. And... I uploaded all of my stuff to the cloud storage and when I when I when I actually turned on the console and started up Final Fantasy 7 remake my saves weren't there. I even did a a backup to my storage devices on my uh on my external hard drive to to in just in case it was like a backup. Um and that actually ended up working out the best way to do it because over the cloud it just didn't work properly or at least it wasn't doing it even though i downloaded the entire database to my ps5 it didn't work properly so i then i had to um, do the external and that worked better and it was able to bring more games and bring more of my saves over and then i just backed up everything to the cloud again just to make sure everything was working properly i'm not sure if your mileage may vary but i know for me it was pretty scary not to see all my saves, especially when I put so many hours into these games. But um, that was that only happened on three games, and then I figured out a fix. And then I, after that, it was no problem at all. But it was just something I want you guys to be aware of. Um, obviously, I didn't have any of these issues on my Series X, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about the PS5. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Borderlands 3. I'm not aware of the P Xbox requiring this, but the PS5 requires you to not only have, um, not only upload your files from a PS4's Borderlands 3, but then you have to download them to the PS5 Borderlands 3. I got rid of my PS4, um, so I have to now download both of those games. And this is just a one-off thing. This is something that you don't have to do for everything. I just hope that the games that do have issues bringing saves over don't require this as well. It seems as if Borderlands did their own unique style of transferring saves, and I'm assuming that's because of how they do their saves and not something that sony is particularly doing so if you look here on my um, games and apps you will see when it loads um you will see here that borderlands 303 gigabytes uh, on the ps4 version and then um 
what you'll see as well is if I go to my console storage that I also have a once it loads Borderlands 3 for the PS5 and that's 74 gigs. Essentially, I have to go into the PS4, upload my saves, and then download my saves to Borderlands 3. And you're like, okay, fine. That's why you still have the old one. Well, essentially right now, Borderlands 3 only allows you to carry over one save. And you say, for instance, you have four characters. It's only going to allow you to move one person over. And if you try to move the next person over, it deletes the person that you already had there. So there's literally no way for me to just move all four of my characters over now. And this, again, this is a bug with Borderlands, I think. This is not something to do with Sony. I'm just mentioning it because this is something that I, not, I have not seen happen on the xbox this is just on the playstation so i'm not sure if it's something that does to do with the playstation or if it's just really how they wanted to do it but this is not something that you necessarily have to do on the other side and that's why i'm mentioning it here and if i do mention mention that but i haven't seen anybody talking about it outside of on the playstation um but yeah i play a lot of borderlands it was very important for me to really see that and, and make sure it worked and it didn't. Um, next thing I want to talk about, and um, this is something that I haven't experienced at all, but people are saying if you go into the PlayStation Store and you download something that you want to play, like say, for instance, you just bought Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and you have a issue where it stops the download or it causes an error for the download. It's going to say that you're still downloading it at in the store and it's not going to allow you to continuously finish said download on your console. It's not going to allow you to restart it because it's basically in a limbo state now where it's not showing up under your downloads or it's not showing up that it's in queue and it's also already saying that it's queued up on the PlayStation Store. So the only way to fix that is has been to reinitialize your console and basically factory reset it. And that is not good either. Um, being that these games can't be transferred over to an external hard drive as of now, you literally would have to re-download everything you did. And the only games that you don't have to is the PS4 games. And really, yeah, it's just another thing where I'm just, it may be good that you guys didn't have it on time. Um, when it comes to new UIs, new systems, this is a very new system. This is something that's not familiar. Um, so it, it does have these quirks and kinks that need to be worked out. Um, so hopefully that is done. I haven't experienced that because I've literally bought all my games that are brand new for the PlayStation 5 physically. So I have been able to just install and go about my day. I didn't have to do anything like that. So I, I'm not going to risk it either. At this point, I'm just going to play the games that I got physically. Um, uh, next thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, as of now, how they recognize PS4 and PS5 games as well as your subscriptions and how that all plays out. So if you look here under my games library and I go to say, say for instance, I want to play some God of War. I have this game installed on my external hard drive. I now own PlayStation Plus Collection, which gives me this game, a digital copy of said game. I recent, I have this game physically. If I try to play it, it still requires me to put in the disc. Even though it's installed and I have a digital copy of this game now, but because my saves and my because my data is all done through the physical disk, I now have to delete said game, re-download it in order to play the PlayStation Plus collection version. It's no option for me to just go in and I already have it installed. It says it's included in PlayStation Plus. It knows I have the license and yet I still can't play it without putting in the disk. 
very annoying. <laughs> I don't understand why it's very annoying, but um, it is what it is. So I have to delete it and then re-download it. Um, there isn't anything else for me to really do. Um, I try to update my, you know, my um, actual, because if you go here into your, I have to find it first. Now, now my brain is scattering. If I go to users and accounts and I go to my um, account and I go to payments and subscriptions, well, no, not payment and subscriptions. Where is it? Oh, restore licenses and I hit restore. Yeah, I got a lot of licenses, people. I play a lot of games. Well, once that's finished, the, the, the situation is still the same. I'm not going to be able to play that game without putting in the disk unless I don't delete it and re-download it, even though I have all the files necessary to play it without putting in the disk. All right, so I did that. Let's see if it fixes it. Nope. Okay, so yeah, it's still the same thing. So another thing that I wanted to talk about was the actual read and write speed. So I use a hard drive for both my Series X and my PS5. And the read and write speeds for my PS5 to an external hard drive and from an external hard drive to the PS5 internal is slower than my PS, I mean, than my Series X. Um, they're not different in branding. They're both WD, so I'm not sure what, what's the reason behind that, but I can tell you that the Series X is faster. Um, when it comes to the Wi-Fi, which was alarming to me because I, I thought that the Wi-Fi for the PS5 was better, um, but the download speeds on my PS5 came in around, I would say, 150 megabytes. Yeah, 150 megabytes for download speeds on the Wi-Fi. And then for my Series X, it was getting around 323. Big difference. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of how my Wi-Fi is set up. Um, I switched to landline. My landline for my Xbox Series X was getting around 350, and for my PS5, it came a little bit more in line. It was around 280. Uh, so that was like the difference in the jumps from LAN to Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi was definitely a, a big difference. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, I was expecting a bigger leap, but maybe it's just more so my setup. But... I still enjoy this console. These are small things that you have to get used to because of the the newness. Yes, this is a new UI. Yes, there's new things about it. And that's why the experience is different. If you want to play the safe route, the Series X is definitely the safer route. It works and it just works. It doesn't have any of these issues. It doesn't have any problems for me. I am able to boot games quickly. I am able to check my SSDs and my external hard drives very quickly. I can manage my space appropriately. It doesn't need additional space for backwards compatibility. It's not going to require me to uh, if I if I own a game in Game Pass now, I don't have to reinsert the disc to play it. If I get the digital license, it's not going to cause me where I don't I have to still put in a disc to play something. It's just going to recognize um, that that I now have the digital license and it's going to play the games as they normally should. Um, it's just those types of little quirks that you have to understand. That being said, you do not. Do not expect to have a seamless experience with the PS5. It has some quirks, and that's okay because, again, they did that for a reason. This is a new experience, and for it to be as polished as it is coming out the gate, um, 
I, I appreciate that. It has apps already on it. That used to be something that was a bothersome for people where they didn't even have applications that ran on it. So it's it's a lot more seamless. It's just that the Series X compared to it is very similar, very already been robust, and it's, it's been tested. It's, it's true. It's already there. That's why it's going to have the better experience for now. Um, it's going to obviously be updates coming down the line. We're going to get the expandable storage options soon enough. I really hope that comes sooner than later because as of now, that 667 is getting ate up like hotcakes. This game, this council, I, I feel bad for anybody that's just going to have this council just as their main source because literally if you buy four of the new games coming out and some of the first parties and then that's it you're going to eat up so much space and then once you try to start playing backwards compatible games and you if you don't have any expandable storage and you want to use the internals it's just a bad situation but we already kind of knew that um again i still speak its praises when it comes to the dual sense controller um, the design, I, I could care less about, honestly, about the design of a console, but it does still have a pretty seem, uh, interesting uh, showcase there. It has a USB-C port, um, if that really helps you out. But outside of that, really, the whole, the whole PS5 experience is just something new, and that's what that's what really gravitates me towards it and miles morales and demon souls but outside of that that's pretty much it for this video i know it's a long one but i really wanted to just kind of go through my experience as of now and some of the quirks that i have found um and then we can discuss in the comments section what you guys think what's your experience if you have any of this stuff if you discovered new things if you feel like i'm over exaggerating just let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will keep in touch. But again, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.